Well, President Trump's personal attorney wants to make it clear that the president will never concede the election and fully intends to win. That, according to Ruli Giuliani, who says the president was being sarcastic when he said in a tweet that Biden won the election by stealing votes, that this was not by any means an intention for the president to concede. Joining us on the line now is Dave Dulio, professor of political science at Oakland University. Dave, welcome to the Paul W. Smith Show. Good morning, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. So I'm curious a little bit, uh, uh, you know, is there any real danger in, in taking our time and looking into this? It's not like we haven't done it before. Back in 2000, I think uh, it took 36 days before an actual uh, winner was declared. We're not there yet. Uh, is, the, is the former First Lady Michelle Obama right that this has to happen immediately? Or is uh, President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, correct in saying, that uh, they have the right to uh, have these legal challenges and it doesn't put the country in any danger by doing so. Well, well, Kevin, I think they're both right. You know, I think the tone and tenor of the former First Lady's uh, message is correct. In, uh, but uh, having said that, there are procedures in place, there are processes in place, there are uh, ways that, that candidates are afforded to uh, challenge results that are um, that that can be uh, looked into you know recounts are the are the normal are the one maybe that's most familiar um, but th- you know they're working through the the court process uh, as expected and it, at some point the evidence is either going to be there or it's not and I don't think that that is um, uh, such a big deal to wait for that to play out in fact I think you could have some that would argue uh, having that process play out would give people would give more people more confidence in the result the a lot of Democrats are saying, hey, uh, Joe Biden needs to be brought up to speed. He needs to be read in on national security, on uh, the COVID crisis, on the economic crisis. Uh, it has to happen now. Uh, by not doing so, puts all of us in jeopardy. Uh, the president's position is uh, he he's the president. He has things under control and that uh, Joe Biden can be brought up to speed uh, when and if he is found to be the, the next president of the United States. D- does Do we need to inform both of them at the same time? Well, I think what's interesting is you're seeing more and more Republicans, not all of them, but more and more of them, uh, come out and say that former Vice President Biden, uh, now President-elect Biden, uh, should be included in the briefings he should get the uh, uh for instance the updates on the on covid-19 he should get the presidential daily brief on the national security side uh i and you know it's one of those things that happens in a transition uh i and and let's just play it out and say that the that the president is successful in his challenges what does it hurt if joe biden has been briefed and then the result is um is is something different than we expect i'm not sure what what uh what it does uh, it, to any detriment to have have uh, Biden briefed on all these things. I don't remember. You probably don't either. But do you remember in 2000 when uh, Al Gore and George Bush essentially tied if they were both uh, brought up to speed on everything that was going on for the 36 days while the courts in Florida were trying to determine who the winner was? Yeah, that's a really good question, Kevin. And you're right. I, I don't remember um, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they were, but you know what? Given the way politics is, it also wouldn't surprise me if they weren't. Well, it seems clear that uh, the president uh, isn't giving up yet. We've seen uh, many uh, uh, lawsuits filed. He's tweeted that uh, more are to come. Uh, there's been a lot of reporting that the uh, suits so far don't have a lot of merit, uh, but uh, that that isn't uh, slowing him down any. I wanted to ask you just quickly before I let you go. Uh, here in Michigan, um, a bit of a controversy over uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer uh, saying she has the authority to uh, put new uh, – stay-at-home orders in place, and now the GOP saying, uh, you know, maybe it's time to recall Governor Whitmer. How serious is this animosity getting? Well, I think the animosity has been serious for for months. Um, clearly, the legislature wants to be involved. 
Um, and it doesn't look like the governor has much interest in involving them. Uh, you know, and, and whether or not that's her fault or their fault, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not privy to those conversations, if any, that are being had. Uh, but I think the animosity is very serious, and it's, it's only going to get worse. Uh, you know, whether or not that turns into a credible uh, recall effort, um, I, I would be doubtful of that at this point only because uh the the governor is is held in pretty high esteem by the by the folks in michigan you know her approval ratings are uh close to 60 percent in the last polls that i've seen so i think that 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 would be a heavy lift now that doesn't mean that that things can't change or won't um but certainly the uh the acrimony between the the two sides is uh it's a problem yeah, it's, it's been a problem since the beginning when they were arguing about a budget and trying to pay for roads. Right. Uh, that never came to fruition. I don't, I haven't been on the roads that much. I don't, I don't think we got, got them done yet, but, uh, <laughs> clearly, clearly they're not getting along. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, David Dulio, uh, Oakland University professor of political science. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Kevin. All right. We'll be back with much more. Let's check traffic with David Clark.